Don't get stuck in what you're designed to walk through. You go through waters. You go through rivers. You go through uh, fire. You go through, don't say I'm in debt, say I'm going through it. When you say I'm going through it, you already see yourself on the other side. You got to have faith to know God's going to bring me out of this. I, I'm not in trouble, I'm going through trouble. That means I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out, I am coming out of this thing. I'm, I'm seeing myself coming out of this. It, it's, it's, it's through it. When you know that you're going through something, you know that there's an end in sight. You know that God has already assigned a death date to everything that is vexing your life. Let me say that again. Every problem, every problem has a death date. God has already, there's only so long that that little girl can mess you up. There's only so long that God is going to let a man jack your emotions up. It has a death date assigned to it. Are you listening to me? I want you to hear that a trouble, a problem, something that vexes your soul, it has a death date. God will only let it trouble your mind, trouble your sleep so long, and after a while, God can make it where it'll, you'll never shed another tear over that again. You'll never shed a tear over that again. You won't cry over that problem anymore because you've grown up now. And he'll make it, he, he will not give them the power to keep on hurting you. After a while, he will make you insensitive to it where you'll be able to find peace amid the storm. Where the words that they were saying that used to hurt you and used to make you cry, that stuff now rolls off of your back like water off of a duck. I'm telling you, God has a way of helping you to be able to go through stuff. When you look and you see a sign here that somebody is messing and cheating around and it used to tear you up and suspicions used to drive you crazy, now you're in a place where I've already let them do what they're going to do because I've already settled this thing with God. My heart is right. My face is set like a flint and I'm looking unto him, the author and the finisher of my faith. And I'm just here to remind you today that when God wants to do something in your life, you have to remember how he took uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a fiery furnace. And as he had them in a fiery furnace, uh, remember that they put these three men into the fire bound. But when they looked in the window, they saw them loosed. And this is what I heard the Lord say to me, that I will deliver you in the fire before I deliver you out of the fire. That I'll get you free even before they let you out. I'll make it to where they can't hold you down in your emotions anymore. They cannot make you their prisoner where they are controlling how you feel and what you think about. God says while you're still in the situation, I'll deliver you in the fire before I'll deliver you from the fire. And if you don't find your deliverance in the fire, God says I'm not going to let you out of the fiery trial until you learn to get free while you're still in there. Until you learn to operate on the level of the money that you've got right now, God says, I'm not going to bless you with any more. But when you can thank me for what I've already blessed you with, no matter how little it is, when you can be grateful, when you can learn to be content in the condition where you are, then God says, I'll deliver you in the fire and then I'll deliver you from the fire. God says, when you learn to do without the thing, then I'll trust you with it. He will get you into a place where the things that used to get you down no longer get you down anymore. I'm just here to tell you that God came to set somebody free right now, even while you're in the situation. You may not be able to move to where you want to move and work where you want to work right now, but you can get free, you can get happy, you can get delivered while you're in the fire. While you're still in a bad marriage, God can deliver you and set you free and give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'm just going to remind you today that he can set you free in the fire. And the only reason, the only reason that God will let you go through fire, he talks about it in Revelation chapter 20, that this lake that burns with fire where the devil and his cohorts are. Fire is a dwelling place for the devil. So whenever the devil has been riding your back, God will let you go down to the fire so that when you get to the fire, the fire is not designed for you. It's not our place of abode. The fire is not designed for the saints. It's designed for the devil and his cohorts. So when demonic things have been riding you, when satanic things have been plaguing your mind and interrupting your sleep and current possessing your thoughts, he'll take you in a fiery situation so that while you're there, you drop the devil off at his place of abode. That's what happened.
to the Apostle Paul on the island of Miletus. He was up preaching and then out of the fire comes a viper, a snake, a venomous poisonous snake and latches onto his hand. Paul kept on preaching. There's something that you got to learn to ignore. Don't even let the devil mess you up. It latched on to him. Paul shook it off and it fell back down into the fire where it belonged. It was, a demonic, it was a demonic thing. It came out of the fire. He sent him back to the fire. It's time today in the name of Jesus to send demonic things back into the pits of hell. Something that have come to your house, it's time to send that mess back to hell now. You got to be able to look at the devil and say to hell with that. Let it go back, let it go back, let it go back. I'm just here to remind you today that that very thing, the fire was created for the devil and his angels. And we go through the fire, so we shake them off and leave in. And when we come out, we come out as pure gold. The stuff that was messing up our shine has been removed from our life. And we leave that thing in the fire. And you let it just burn, baby, burn. Burn, baby, burn. And you hear the voice of God say, I have brought the fire in your life and I speak deliverance to you and I bless your life this day and I pray today that if you're in a fiery situation that you hear God setting you free from everything that has caused your life to be in bondage and you realize that there's some things that you've got to shake off back down into that fire and you've got to send it back to the pits of hell the very thing that have been trying to latch attach themselves onto your life may i remind you that there are some people and some things that will try to attach themselves to you and some that are assigned to you if it's trying to attach shake it back off if it's been assigned to you carry it with you because what is assigned to you will bless you but what is attached to you will slowly kill you I pray that you will listen to the fire because the voice of the Lord splits the flame. And right in the midst of your hot situation, God has something to say to his children. And you find God in a new way when you have been through the fire. You learn, God, nobody can take away the revelation of who you have by God when you have walked with God in the fire, through the fire, through the fire, through the fire, through the fire. You're coming through this thing. That means that you're coming out of this. You're coming out. You're coming out of this thing. God's going to bring you out. I go through the waters, through the rivers, through the fire. Don't make your bed in a place that God says to go through. Never confuse the permanent with the temporary. And you'd have to just say that, God, I'm trusting your voice. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting your voice. I need to hear your voice amid the storm, amid the fire. I need your voice to say, God, what are you doing? Why are you doing? I need your voice for understanding. I need your voice for wisdom. I need your voice. Be seated for just a moment.